Do you want to say, Ryan? Yeah. Not like Hawaii. I wouldn't press the buttons in Hawaii. But. <laughs> so, okay. Um, yeah, my name is Tom Atkins. I work for the New York State Attorney General Office, um, web developer lead. Um, a very small team, Just there's just four of us, five, four or five of us. And um, but basically, I've been doing internet web work since 1997. I had my own little record label that I was trying to start. And uh, so I put all my music out and remembering the woes of real player and quick time and, and how completely inefficient Netscape and Explorer and all those nightmares were working. Um, <clears throat> I graduated from College Oneana as a music industry grad, which is why I turned into a web developer. <laughs> of course. Um, because, you know, after just a few years of living on the beach and just hoping for more money in the guitar case, I just like, you know, I think I can do a little bit better than that. Um, but basically, since 2002, I've been working for New York State, and uh, now I work for the Attorney General's office, and it's a really great privilege to work there, because we handle a lot. We're handling a lot of cases, a lot of work for uh, people in New York, and it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to work there. It's a lot of fun. Um, my specialty is in accessibility and in uh, usability. And uh, the reason why accessibility happened was because I was born partially deaf in both ears. So I wear hearing aids, um, which is an amazing invention. It's the first time I put them in, I heard birds and rain, all sorts of things for the first time. Um, but it doesn't impact my ability to hear speech that badly. But that being said, it would be much easier for me to take your questions if you tweet them and I can read them. Otherwise, you're going to see me going over and go like this. And, you know, no one wants to see me hunker over like that, including me. So, yeah, if you want to tweet them, my, my, uh, my uh, Twitter handle is right there, Guitarist Tom. Um, you can also find it at TomAtkinsBand.com. That's a selfish plug. You don't have to go there. That's just, that's just my band. That's just what I do. And uh, so if you tweet your question to Akatar's Tom at the end of our presentation, I'll try to answer them. Another reason why I stayed away from a lot of code. <laughs> so I, can, I can't answer them. Um, so real quick, uh, what I'm going to present on today is a concept, basically, I mean, it's just lingo. Content-driven design is uh, what Drupal has taught me more than any other CMS out there, is that you really have to get familiar with your content before you design your website. How many times have you just turned around and go, oh, this would be a great website. I can just turn around and I'll spit this right up. But then, you know, after a little bit of time, you're finding all these problems with it because you didn't think of all the other necessary areas for that content to go. You didn't think of every other possibility for the content to be. So you really have to study where, how it's going to be working. Um, and so, brief much on the content design, content-driven design, that's what we're talking about. Um, then, the solution for that, I've found, is in using Drupal and use the Bootstrap Paragraph module. Now I was speaking to Jim Birch, who is the guy who came up with the module at lunch today. That's another reason why Drupal community is amazing. I can't think of any other software that you can just casually meet the person who came up with this insanely great idea. I mentioned that before, but a couple of people just like Ray just showed up, so I wanted to hear. I want him to. Um, and then, uh, so basically, I'll just preview the process. Uh, you're going to build up your local environment. Uh, you're going to have a bootstrap sub theme, which I've whittled it down to typing in seven characters. And then um, you basically install the modules and then flesh out your content type and do that. I wanted to have this crushingly awesome demo that was, wow, those graphics are amazing. And I want to have all this stuff. And I realized I was spending so much time on making this website <laughs> that the message was getting lost. The simplicity behind it is the most important part. Drupal has this incredible ecosystem, but it is not easy. This is easy, and this is a solution that we need to have out there. Um, it's content-driven design. So, what is content? The state of peaceful happiness? Or is that content? <laughs> I want my content to be content. Um, 
to make someone pleased and satisfied. I want my content to do that. That's the ultimate mission for everything we make. We want to make it easier. And it's basically the principal substance in written matter. Illustrations of media offered by a website. That might be from Wikipedia. I forget where I got that, but that's the tactical definition. But I think the two top definitions are better. That's a bigger answer. Um, so, um, to do this for your content, you really need to analyze who your content's for. Um, use all the tools that are available online to do that. You get Google Analytics, see who's looking at it. Check your audience for the audience that you want. What do the audience want that you want to get? You get your content out there. You have to analyze it first. Um, who here has heard of a design studio? No one? Design studio is a great process where you get together and you, you basically put all your principles to your, sta your stakeholders and you put them all together in a room and you flesh out all the ideas about your content. And it's an awesome process. It ensures you will not have a winning website without it. It's that important. That's why it scares me that you guys have never heard of it. Maybe you've heard of it a different way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe using index cards. Yeah, using index it. cards. You well, use little stickies. On, um, you can research it out. I put, I put a good link on the Design Studio method on this presentation, which after this presentation's over, I'll put it up on the site. Um, Gathercontent.com is another place you can go. I think if you want to spend some money, you can do that. I think they also have some free options there. Um, but you basically want to assemble your content suggestions, your related content, your SEO best practices, and make that content sausage. Put it all together. And then always check with a list apart, because they're the smartest people I've ever read. Um, I can think of it that, as I said, I started as a musician, and I wound up a web developer, not because I stopped playing guitar, but because a list and other people were putting out this great content, and I can't stop reading it. So I got to be good because the way we're all open about it, and it's great. Um, so, a couple principles behind this. So you're gonna basically gonna take, once you have all that content, a content-driven design is basically when you're gonna separate the process. We have your web developers doing web, you have your content editors doing content. Um, you want it to be naturally mobile, of course. This is 2017, 2018. I don't think it's okay to have a non-mobile website anymore. Uh, but it's, there, there are still tons of websites out there that are. Drupal 8 gives you native responsive right out of the bat with so many tools, with images, and with, 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 all, with all the images you can do. And Bootstrap is a great framework to do that, but there's other frameworks so you can do that as well. Um, but the, the thing I'm trying to point out is you want to take into account the entire website. You want to look at how you reflect the UX challenge of a website. Um, lots of UX.com great website to look at your content from that eye. It's not a common thing. Again, Drupal always taught me to do this because, not only because it was hard, but because they really stressed it. They said, you know, everybody blames us for our sites not working, but they're not looking at their content. That's, that's the polite backhand <laughs> that they would say. Um, but it's the only framework or content management system that really says, hey, let me look at my content. Let's take our time. Let's look at our content types. Let's build it the right way. Um, it, really, it really is the huge, biggest difference between that. And I, I did Joomla for a little while. And I loved Joomla. I thought it was great. And hey, your module developers for Joomla, they get paid. You know, those are, that's a market. But there's not as many of them as open source. And if anything taught me that it was today, when I was speaking to Jim Birch about his, his, about his module. That would never happen to Jubilee. You know, I would probably have to pay him to have lunch with him, which I will anyway, <laughs> at some point, I'm sure. Um, so after you've done all your content work, after you've put it all together, it's time to make prototypes. So there are a ton of really good available tools to prototype. It doesn't require you to be a graphic designer. It requires you to love your content. It requires you to think about it differently than you did before you walked in here today. So there's a ton of different tools. There's Sketch. If you don't want to pay Adobe's Photoshop, you can do Sketch. Adobe has XD, which is another good prototyping tool. 
Azure, I won that for free in, at the Design for Boston, and it's a, an amazing tool because it actually gives you the JavaScript tools, so it shows you how your website's gonna behave. So it's beyond just showing a prototype, it's actually making the website, which is pretty impressive. Um, I used Bootstrap Studio for a little bit because I know Bootstrap well enough that I can think of a website, I can think of a problem, and I'm gonna use all those different parts of Bootstrap and I can solve the problem and I can display it quickly. That's not necessarily the same as using, as doing it the way I was just talking about, but that's me. So I'm using that tool for me. Um, a bootstrap paragraphs this way, that's the evolution of what that is. It's basically bootstrap paragraphs is using that principle, all those different components, component based design, using all these different tools to go ahead and present your website. Um, so, I'll explain this, 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 this to give, put a smile on your face. Um, so I was going to make this crushingly awesome demo, and it was going to be called iGuitar Journal. And it was just going to basically track everybody who wanted to learn how to play guitar, and it was going to be a place to do all this kind of stuff, and it was going to be awesome with all the different content types and all this other stuff. And I, and, and I was going to Excel, Excel spreadsheet, all the things. What usually happens when you do your design tool, you put all your content together, you have it in one big document. You have your spreadsheet, and you're building your sites off of that spreadsheet. Well, that's great, but this is a demo. You guys don't care about. How many of you guys are musicians? Anybody play any music at all? Awesome. What do you play? Organ and mandolin cello. <laughs> <laughs> that's gotcha. awesome. Gotcha. That's awesome. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to call it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to call it cello. I cello for you. Um, but anyway, it's the same principle though. It was the same, the same idea. Anything you're going to learn, you have to be able to put the time in. You have to do that 10,000 hours of getting good at something. I think since 97, I think I've gotten the 10,000 hours on web design. I'm not 10,000 hours on Drupal yet. Close, but you know, it, that's an elusive dream. Um, so the real world, what happens when I make this kind of thing, I just need to uh, I realized I had some problems. I realized I had to build things more than just showing a demo site. I was going to actually have to build <coughs> modules and tools to do all these different kinds of things. Um, here's the best part. You have to do all those things to make your website. This has been a dream of mine for a long time. I've been wa I was a guitar teacher for all that whole time. And I said, you know, it would be great if I could get my students to, to be able to track their practice time, and they'd be able to just go ahead and sign into a website, and just hit start, and they'd have all the things that they had to do, and then they'd finish, and then they'd track what they did. It's so simple, you know? And of course, you gotta have the bad kid who just okay, wakes up in the morning, quick, I signed in, goes out and parties, come back, signs out. That's gonna happen, but it's also gonna show that he didn't play. You know, I mean, it's also gonna come up that way. So, I realized that we weren't gonna be able to uh, built that just for this presentation two weeks ago. <laughs> and I've actually mentioned to Ray. It's a real desire of mine to do. I want to build that. I want to build a tool in Drupal that will allow me to store. So any of you guys who are advanced, you guys who I know you guys have been doing it for a while, please tell me the right way. PHP sessions, JavaScript clock, let me know. Because I, I get different I get different ideas. I get different people telling me different things. I'd like there to be an app interface for it as well. So they could just save it on their phone and it would just upload it to the website. So let me know. So it was it was an actual thing. I did actually make the site in the UX pair. I did actually build it, but I'm not really showing it today because it's not really the point of this whole thing. Um, our goal is to not just do the content. Your content has to teach people to want to use your website. You have to, you have to bring them in. You, have to, you actually really have to look at every word. Some, some people are really good writers. Not me. I'm a good writer, but I'm not a great writer. I have a, a cousin who married a, a, an incredible writer, and that's what he does. He's a content strategist. Um, amazing. It's really important to look at every word on that page. I can say that with experience working for the Attorney General's office, because we have tons of lawyers, and they all swear they are Shakespeare. Problem is, 
People who don't want to read Shakespeare, they just want to know what they need to know. They have five seconds and we're out. We don't have time for it. That's the website. But if they're going to get deeper into it, you need the content strategist to pull them into it, to understand the issue, understand what the problem is, what the lawsuit is trying to solve, what the, why the attorney general is bringing a case, what the outcome of the case is, and how important it is. It's very important for it to be written correctly and for it to be displayed correctly on the website. Um, most important thing I could, if you learn anything from me today, accessible design is good design. If you go from a specific point of reference, everything you ever write in your content, when you look at your content, you got to realize there's not just a partially hearing disabled person talking in front of you who can't hear the captions, and I need to see the captions. I've crossed over. I can't believe it myself. I crossed over 48, and I have to see the contents. I watched a, a movie the other day in the theater, and I was like, they started whispering, and I got mad, because I can't hear it. Don't do that to your content. Think outside the box a little bit in that content area and realize that there's going to be people who need your content and they might not be able to see it. If it's all red and I'm colorblind, I won't see it. <coughs> Make sure you're thinking of that. Um, the last aspect of this is, is, is a little bit on the outside and I didn't want to spend too much time on content, but I'm going to stress this one. Uh, there's a really good book that helps get all these things together. Um, Kindergarten, my son, five years old, he's in kindergarten, and I love all the activities they do, and I was in there, and I was realizing he is a website. He's got all of his things in one part, he's got his toys over here, but each part of his site is only doing that one specific thing. So that one specific part of your site, make sure it's only doing that one thing. Don't stack content in and have this huge menu and at the menu, you have a sign-up that nobody's signing up for because they're not looking there. They're, they see the menu. You know what I mean? You have to be mindful of what people are looking at. Um, and this is actually for us, too, because we have a Drupal website, a Drupal 7 website that was started, I think, in the, uh, I think in the Byzantine era of gigantic <laughs> drop-down menu time, which is circa 95, 96 when they had JavaScript menus that just <laughs> go forever. But, um, so we're trying to move up to eight. And I, can, I hate to be able to use our main website as a bad example, but in that case, our content has aged. We need to move up, we need to move to Drupal 8. We need to get rid of the huge drop downs and we need to make it specific so people can see it in seconds. Um, and that highlights the problems. It's the reason why I'm trying to solve this stuff. Um, Stuff has to be natively responsive. Drupal 8 does that. Content editors, the people who are going to put this stuff into the website, they don't even know what that means. They don't know what responsive means. They just mean that when they look at it on their phone, they go, why does the text stop on the edge of my phone? It doesn't work. They don't understand it. They shouldn't work. That's our web developer's job. Uh, multiple audiences and personas often respond to content differently, but the content needs a consistent appearance to reinforce brand identity. This is a crux. This is why it takes all this time to think about it. This is why I'm spending time talking about it, because it's, a, it's something that Drupal taught me that I wasn't doing. And I've been doing web development 10 years before I started doing Drupal. Um, give your content editors the ability to present content in multiple styles and way asking it to retain your branding. So, like I said in the kindergarten classroom, you have all these different things that are in the classroom and all these different places to go but you're still in a classroom. You still are fundamentally there. You know where you are. You're in the kids, you're, you know it's not a high school room. <laughs> pretty sure. I, I haven't been back to my high school in a few years, but I'm pretty sure as a kindergarten it was a lot different. Um, the most important thing, and this is Drupal's Achilles heel, is that what I was, is that the right term? Yeah. It needs to be easy. It needs to be easy to post, easy to modify and revise. I, made Drupal websites for my band. I could not get gigs because I was spending all my time on my website. So I moved off. I went to a different company that just had preset stuff, so I just content, where am I playing? And suddenly, I got gigs. I got to play. I got, I got things to do. I can add my website remotely. They're not using Drupal. I'm trying to get them to. Bandzoogle, do it. Um, anyway, 
That's, uh, that's the company that do it. So once you've done all this step, you got your content together, now what? So I present to you the Drupal Bootstrap Paragraph Solution. It uses the open source Bootstrap theme, which is open source, has exceptional documentation. Bootstrap is, Bootstrap is amazingly documented. I, I have never run into an issue. I have tried to figure out why something did something. I could always find it on, their documentation is awesome. Drupal needs to see how they do that. And we need to add that to how Drupal does everything. Uh, wide adoption means it's easier for onboard more people. Um, when I came into my job at the Attorney General, Web New York was building their own distribution of Drupal and their own tools and their own thing, and that, that's awesome because Drupal's amazing, you can do all that. I came into the Attorney General's office and my boss Eric said, we're using Bootstrap. Okay, done. I already know Bootstrap. Anybody can learn Bootstrap, it's easy. Easy. Decoupling, nah, that's not as easy. Not knocking it, it's amazing, it's a great feature. But it's not easy, and you need to be able to separate that process. Am I gonna be making a decoupled website? What's my content say? My content says I need this to be easy, or no, actually I need it to be really fast. I have multiple concurrent users, and I need to be, well, maybe decoupled is a solution, not Bootstrap. <coughs> but Bootstrap could still be a solution for you. Um, so, as I mentioned before, Jim Birch, I uh, just had lunch with, um, he made a presentation on his Bootstrap uh, bootstrap paragraphs at uh, Baltimore DrupalCon and uh, it's there, the links are right there. When we started doing this process for our bootstrap, we came up with our own term called body parts. And we look at the web page, if you know the HTML page has, has your header, has your header area, then has the body, then it, it basically closing. So we looked at it and said, what's the most all the contents can be in the body. Let's just fill in our body parts. And that's what we called it. We called it body parts. So we built the same thing that Bootstrap Paragraphs does, but we were doing it ourselves. And then after, after it came out, after his 2.0 version came out, it said, yeah, let's just use his. It's, it's documented well. We'll be able to teach this to our users, to be able to content editors, to be able to put their content in the website. So there it is. That's basically, that presentation goes into the deeper aspects of it, to the customizing the code, to be able to design it a little bit more than just keeping it you know, bland, as I'm gonna kind of show with a, with a simple site, just showing you the pieces and the components. Um, so, I just spoke over my slide, I do apologize for that. But basically, that the idea is that we're using body parts and uh, for my, my friend Freddie, who we work together, he's the one who came up with it, so I gotta give him credit. He can't do this, he can't present in front of people. He's very shy. So I promised him I would make sure he gets the credit because he said body parts. And uh, body parts is a great way to think of component-based design. It really works. Um, so when you put these things together, you have a content editor. We'll be putting these things together. Uh, their focus is on the presentation of the content and not and layout options. The web developer is going to basically be given a technical solution. You're going to be dealing with the code of Bootstrap. You're going to customize the brand. And the content strategist and web development needs two, are two separate things, but they need to work seamlessly to make a winning website. Like that. And the best records of all time. Right? Every breath I take Review. is that album. Um, so first up we do is, uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to use uh, bootstrap, bootstrap Paragraphs. Uh, you have to build your local environment. Who here uses Acquia Dev Desktop? Congratulations, you can all do this. Who uses Doxel. Congratulations, you can do it. Who uses anything else that spits up a Drupal website? Congratulations, you can use this. Um, we, I was using Lando and Pantheon because uh, we have a Pantheon site, so I, I basically set up uh, uh, a version of Doxel is a, an amazing tool. I love. I was. We were using Doxel forever. We still are. Um, Drush DL thing. Who knows what Drush is? Awesome. What's your favorite? What's your favorite Drush command? Um, these days, uh, fra slash uh, dash y. Um, reset all our features. Make sure all the sites are in the same. Computer. I love the dash y. The dash y is the automatic yes. Love dash y. I want dash y as a t-shirt. <laughs> um, really quick note. 
there is a distribution of bootstrap paragraphs by a company, and uh, I'm thinking there, yes it is, uh, Varbase, and they just came, I just found this a week ago. They're using Composer and Symphony to use their distribution that uses all these things I'm showing and more, and it's a Drupal distribution. Who here has ever used a Drupal distribution? You know what I mean? Okay, it's for those of you who don't, Drupal, you can download just Drupal, or you can actually, Drupal has a whole bunch of self-contained packages of Drupal, so there's a Lightning version of Drupal by Acquia, which gives you tons of modules already installed. There's Thunder, uh, Ray, help me here, how many thousands of other distributions, right? Yeah, the, What's the one that... different verticals, churches, languages, um, uh, conference organizing. Right. So those are based on the, and now they're actually set distributions for that kind of content. They even stepped ahead and say, hey, if you're a church, I got the distribution for you. I say it that way because it sounds kind of evil, doesn't it? Hey, church, I got a distribution for you. Um, anyway, that's the idea that they have, there's a whole bunch of different versions of Drupal that you can use anywhere. Um, my one little fast trick, I always try to mail, give a fast trick, this is the one I was mentioning before. I found a, uh, the, the, the first thing you're going to do is you, to do this, you have to download Bootstrap theme. Um, but I also found you can download this other Bootstrap theme as well. So first you download Bootstrap, then you download Bootstrap SAS from Drupal coders, and you enable both of them. And then after you've done that, all you have to write is Drush DC and then your theme name. And it automatically makes, it automatically makes your sub-theme um, your sub-theme of, 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 of Bootstrap, and you need to do this why. Anybody want to tell me why you have to have a sub-theme? Anybody know? So you don't overwrite your, um, your changes if they, if, when the theme gets updated? Correct. Exactly right. Um, if you want water? I can give you something. That's perfect. <laughs> <answer. Okay. laughs> um, the on the table upstairs. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's really important is that when you, when you download the theme, you want to make sub-theme it so that when there's an update to that theme, you can, you're not going to overwrite, you're not going to lose all that hard work you just did. Who has lost all that hard work before? <laughs> if you don't learn that way, you, you, you got that's, that's how you learn. You got, I spent close to 30 hours and then there was an update, oh, oh good, Josh, up. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, I lost all my work. So then you're going to go into um, that sub-theme that you make and you basically npm install and now your sub-theme is up and running, that's all you have to do. So with a simple number of, let's see, eight, eight characters, I think I said seven, but basically you can just basically trust PC, your theme, bang, it's up, it's really fast. Anybody else knew a theme that fast, sub-theme that quick? I don't think so. I'm not, that wasn't really a question, that was a statement. Um, so. The next part of it is that there are a lot of other modules you need. Not a lot, there's just a couple. Um, but you basically drush DL, the module theme, and then select it. Uh, it's my favorite one. I like the dot yes, but I like the dot dot select because it gives me the power to make sure to get the version I want. It'll tell you whether or not it's a dev or a beta or an alpha or an omega. And uh, we don't have omega, right? There should be, <laughs> there should be mo module omega. It'll be the end of your Drupal. Um, <laughs> Anyway, these are the, these are the uh, modules you'll need to make all this run uh, for the boot, Drupal Bootstrap to work. It's basically boot, Bootstrap sub-theme. Uh, that, that's what you just made. Any uh, re reference revision is a big one. Reference, views reference is an amazing, mind-blowing one. Paragraphs, obviously. You need the module paragraphs to make all this work. Uh, bootstrap paragraphs, that's why we're here. And then uh, contact formatter and inline and form. Those modules are the basic ones. There are more. And I promise that when I do put this presentation up, not only you get this list, but if you follow me up on, uh, on Twitter and hit the other stuff, I'll also be putting a couple of the other ones I find and the ones I talked to Jim Birch about later today, because there was a, about five or six more that he was like, oh, you should do this. Do this. That's why you want to talk to the module developer, because they know what's awesome. Um, so the other one displayed on my thing, and like I said, I, I'm not going too deep into it, but basically I had an admin theme and an admin menu, which is just a little easier for the content editors to put the stuff in. So, key steps I'm going to show in the demo is I'm going to create the content type, new field of type, I have to do that. 
Um, this is how you make boot, bootstrap paragraphs work. These are the three steps. You have to go in there and do this and allow unlimited so you can add as many as you want and then choose what bundles you want to have. So here, let's go try this. Here we go. Wish me luck. So, Chrome, don't fail me now. How many times do people say that? Okay. So basically, um, I'm running a, this is a dev dot, dev dash time bootstrap demo on Pantheon. This is just a Pantheon spin up site. It's very easy to set up. Um, I, like I said, I won't spend too much time on, there's other, other presentations on different environments and stuff. Kind of assuming, get, Drup get Drupal working, all of it will work, and you can get to, the, get to this point. Um, so, let's go get our content type. Let's add a content type. Is that menu styled, or is that just add minimal? I'm sorry? Is that menu styled, or is that just what add minimal looks like? This is add minimal menu, add minimal admin menu, right? Because I, once, I, once I put this theme on, this add minimal theme, there's an additional menu to make it look a little bit like that. So that's a live class. Live class content type. Because I'm crazy. I can't spell because in front of everybody. All right, so the first couple of things here, we're just, I, again, how, how many of you guys create content types? This is fairly basic. You know, I mean, if you're going to be doing Drupal, you're going to be making content types all the time. So uh, the first part of this, you basically just kind of set this part up. You save and you manage your fields. Now, to make Bootstrap Paragraph Magic work, we have to go into Add Field. Now, I, you can get rid of body. That's the default that comes with Drupal. When you're using Bootstrap Paragraphs, you can get rid of the body. Body part goes in the swamp. Oh, wow, how jersey am I getting? I'm only, here a, I'm only here a day, I'm talking about putting body parts in the swamp. <laughs> um, so, first thing we're going to do is if you have our entry, any reference provisions, I'm going to say paragraph. I'm going to give it a label of demo. And then automatically gives field demo, it's a demo VP. Let's save and continue. Now, this enables me to say, oh, you can do. Well, I'm going to use a paragraph. Now I want unlimited, I guess. So say field settings. So, we have our content type basically set up. I'm going to say, now I have to basically say, do I want to have all these different paragraphs, types involved in my content? For now, I'm going to say yes. There you go. So, we've created it. We have a couple different ones. I'm going to go to demo HP. Create content, add content, and go to live class. Now this is what's cool. So suddenly, I, st I still have body, so that, that's, that can be a little confusing. But now it adds this whole thing in here. It adds in all these magical things. Let's go to the first, let's go to one of the simple ones. Let's go simple. What does it add? It adds background colors. For my content, I can have background color. Those are all based off a of bootstrap theme. I can set up my how big I want it to be. Do I want this to be full? Do I want the sizing? But basically, what what Jim Birch did is he basically said, you know what? Do I want this to fill up the whole page, or do I want it to just be parts? Is it going to be part of, of, of another? He already did that work for you. He already thought that you might want to have different choices. So I'm going to say wide. It doesn't matter. But, oh, wait a minute. I can do more. <coughs> I can add and add and add and add. I can add all sorts. I'm going to add an image. So I can keep adding. Now, here's what's cool about adding an image is uh, I'm going to have an image with a blue background uh, with a Y. Let's see. Let's try cool for you. Yeah, there, that's a good one. Now, the moment I do that, look at this. Accessibility built right in. Alt tag that. There's also another way, there's, a, there's another module that will also, you can configure it uh, when you get happy with code, but you can configure that your alter, alternative text becomes a caption for the photo. 
So you two birds with one stone. You actually make it accessible and you give the content editor the ability to caption the photo and you can style that any way you want. So this is uh, Tom's Taylor guitar. And then there you go. Now I'm going to save this. Now what? I forgot the title. So real quick on the title, I'm just going to go uh, demo of silliness. Save. Demo of silliness. So out there, I have this huge, awesome photo of my guitar. Didn't I have something else in there, though? Didn't I forget something? I did. Oh, good thing I have an edit button. It wouldn't be a demo of silliness if I didn't forget something. So if I'm going ahead, I have a body here. I'm just going to add in. This is this is a super fluous. See, I got past. It's really hard to type and talk in front of people. Lewis. Yeah, yeah. It's a the food system. That's how I spell it, too. Yeah? <laughs> Not known. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to do this. Let me see. This is... This is Extra. why I said it was silly. And, and here. Silly, I say. And I'll give that one a that's cool. Green strong background. That's why I said it was silly. Silly I say. And can you see green? You probably can see the green background on there. Um, yeah, it's bad color choice. Bad color choice for that. But basically that is the demo of a bunch of different pieces. Let me go right back to uh, let me get back to here and show you a couple of the other oops. get back to the content I just made. Um, what is that? So we probably to make a different, different color would be better. Uh, I don't think it would show up. Did I have my first demo, my first uh, blooper? I probably did. It's probably a blooper. I want to preview it. Where's the, where's the uh, gong show? Huh? You're going to pull me right out of here. Um, but anyway, that's... Let's see if I can see it. Yeah. It's not there. That's why the green was so fake. It was so faded, it wasn't there. It was a very light green, incredibly light green. Um, but anyway, there, so there's something I obviously have to turn on on my, on my doohickeys in, the, in this website. But there are more things for me to show you. So let me go to edit and give you a couple other samples of this amazing tool. So do you guys see the kind of coolness that's available? This is all based on Node. You can basically, any Node, you can just start stacking up different pieces of of content in, and they're all available just from that one piece. And once you make your own separate piece, say in views, which you make some other pieces, as you play with it. Now, like I said, I had to make a, I had to make a call when I'm making the presentation. How deep, the, how deep down the rabbit hole do I go, showing everything working? I was going to make this incredible demo that was just insane, and then I'm like, well, yeah, but that's not what they need to see. They need to see different examples of what they can do themselves. So that's what I wanted to do. Um, so basically, uh, blank, you might think, why do I need a blank for? A blank, you want to set up with a unrestricted text type. Security warning, don't give this out to every single person that you meet, because that's kind of a security problem. But what's really good about using un unrestricted text format is, say, if you want to embed like an API, or if you want to embed a call to another service, so your web page can actually pull from data on any other site that it needs to get. You can put code right here, and then it will do that. So right in the middle of your node, you're actually pulling something else. So it's, it's, a, it's an amazing little, little uh, tip that Jim Birch put together for us. Some other ones, uh, accordions, obviously everybody's seen what accordions look like. Um, it, they give you an accordion section first, and then you add uh, simple parts to your accordion, and then each one stacks up. Let me go back to time. I'm going to time. Um, I'll wrap some of this up here. So, uh, so yeah. So we kind of showed those kind of different. Oh, I did forget the one thing. You can remove. I, I got to. I'm actually going to 
Here we go. I gotta go back. I gotta double back. Hold on a second. I'm double back to that. <laughs> this is really, really neat about this. If I go to remove this stuff, I love this. Remove, it, that confirm removal. Don't we love that? Are you sure you want to get rid of that? Yes, I want to, be, I want to get rid of it. No, oh, I want to restore it too. Oh, so not only did I sit there and destroy my guitar, I can restore my guitar at the same time. It's a great tool. They really thought of a lot of things when they put this together. And how easy can it be? It doesn't get any easier than that. WordPress, it gets pretty easy, but you don't have control over it like you have control over this. You don't have the control over it. And you didn't put all that thought into it because you thought WordPress was going to be easy and you didn't look at your content and everything with the, sh everything with the crap. I almost swore. All right, that happens when I talk about WordPress. So, um, anyway, so yeah, so I wanted to show you. Removing is a, is a really cool uh, really cool feature. Um, we added in, we added in the guitar. Um, a couple of really cool things. Yeah. Uh, a couple of really cool things I didn't show that are available that have an amazing use case, but you can have a full skies background as a paragraph type, and then that can be your home page. So you can have this huge, those cool websites when they have those huge pictures on them, and then you just content on top of it. That can just be a paragraph type. And then you can teach your content editors to change that. You can have a carousel. You can have all sorts of, you can have full-size video backgrounds. Now, before I say that, we know our media friend is not necessarily as friendly as we'd like it to be yet. So, I've seen it work. I'm not showing it now. Um, I was going to try to do that now as well. It's like, no, I, I don't have time. Um, so basically, as you see, here's all the basic the tools that Bootstrap Paragraphs gives you. All the same tools, these are component-based design principles. They're all right there. Um, the carousel is amazing. It uses the same principles of a bootstrap carousel, the same type. It doesn't have to be a picture. It can be content. You can just rotate content and let people look through content. My apologies to Brad Frost, because carousels are kind of a no-no, but managers still really like them. So I showed you the simple. Um, that's the basic <coughs> element of it. Um, it pretty much gives you all of it gives you the, that's the basic element. You already, when you're looking at your basic content type and you had basic or blog or article, it had this. So it's the same. It's a tool you already know. Image, we went through really quick. Um, the alt tag, it does allow for customization of content like, uh, of, of uh, captions, like I said, and it's successful. Can you, um can you add uh, like classes and stuff to like those image? Uh, so it's like, say, if you wanted to do the bootstrap image rounded or the bootstrap rounded yes. corners. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you totally can. Um, you can. You can basically, if I if I double back over the images, all the tools that you wanted to do with Bootstrap are there. Oh, okay. They're they're in the they're already in your framework. All you have to do is go there, oh. and and you can add them. Um, most of, as far as the coding goes. The Bootstrap Paragraph module is, is following the uh, Proc Element Modifier format. So if you're familiar with that aspect, and for the basic guys, I apologize, that might be a little bit, that might be a little bit uh, busier for CSS, but, but basically that, that is totally customized and you can totally use it. You can, have, you can set those up as types, as paragraphs, so that every time you put an image in, it's just showing you that type. So say if you just wanted that common thing for like sitemaps or people who worked on my website and you want to circle the head in the circle, you can set that as a paragraph type and say circle face and bang, the content editors know you put the circle face together. Um, one thing that he w went above and beyond for was adding a content, a contact form. Um, there is also the super cool web form plugin, so you can use web forms as well. Um, carousels, similar type of thing. Um, like I said, it just it gives you the width, the background. They also give you a uh, slide interval time. You, can, you don't have to go through JavaScript hell to go ahead and figure out the time. You can just say how long you want to go. Uh, answer that problem. But again, apologies to Brett for us because carousels are a bad idea. But most managers still want you to use them regardless of how many times you show them that no one's watching them, which is true. Um, I'm sure in the SEO talk, they'll point out that it looks great. Um, somebody's there for five seconds, they saw one slide, and they moved on. Your 13 slides don't get looked at. Sorry, we just don't have that kind of time. 
Um, but there are a whole other bunch of variations you can add to that carousel. As well, as even I've seen it used, but using a different JavaScript to handle the carousel. I think there's a slick JS, and you can, you can encode, just tell, tell Bootstrap Paragraph to use that JS instead. Uh, blocks, I'm going to be honest, I haven't used it for this, but you can basically, when you're assembling your page, you can e even include blocks um, inside of your content, inside of your node. Um, it's very useful, uh, but I think, I'm assuming that you want to use that in your own content type. You're not going to want to just willy nilly throw a block in the middle of your node. Like, I'm going to assume you're going to want to have a content type that you're setting up for that. Uh, views, this is the part that, this is the power of Drupal. Views is the most important tool that you learn in Drupal, and this is probably the best way to see the amazing thing that Drupal Bootstrap Paragraphs gives you is it gives you not only the ability to embed a view inside your node, but to pass an argument. And by passing an argument, I mean it will say, hey, where am I? What's my node? Where am I? I'm going to present this menu minus where I am so someone can get there quicker. So many uses, I, I, I could go for an hour and not be list them all. They're amazing. So it's a really good... Uh, it's really, really the coolest part of this to me because it's natively to Drupal. The most important part of Drupal is using views and you can use bootstrap paragraphs to put your views in the middle of your nose. Uh, insanely great use of Drupal. That's my Apple shirt on. Um, columns, you can put all your, pay, you can put all your content in the columns. That, that, that works that way. Um, very humorous, I don't think seven or nine or 11 columns will work. I think the math is just kind of just crashes everything, but by default, do, by, do, <laughs> bootstrap paragraphs handle six, uh, three and twos. Accordions, um, bootstrap collapse JS, and as I started to show you, it basically just gives you the ability to add uh, according to your, uh, oh, another, another whoopsie. I'll have to fix that before I put that, all the, all the things. Um, and layout and modal. Uh, who knows what the word modal means in this context? Do you know, you know what I mean by modal? It's a pop-up. It's a pop-up window. The most annoying thing ever created on the internet. <laughs> right here for you to go ahead and annoy everybody who comes to your website. Um, and the last part of this, uh, I'm almost done. The global settings, uh, that gets involved in the code, but basically, he enables it, the, uh, the content fixed or the content fluid, if you guys know Bootstrap, is basically in there, that's where the why, that's where the width options were, and you can configure that to yourself. So say you don't want your content editors to ever give you a full size anything, you can do that. It's in the code. Um, once again, his pre Jim presentation on Bootstrap Paragraphs at Baltimore, if you really get into it, you really want to learn more about the advanced guys out there, um, it's a great presentation, goes through everything you possibly you could ever need. Um, and it basically shows you how customizable it is. It does require the, a few more modules to be added, Devel, a couple more Twig, Twig extensions, a couple things to be able to help you edit that code easier. And um, again, perfectly explained by him. I was, I was gonna show more on that, but like I said, I'm, I have like five minutes to go. Um, <laughs> last comment. You gotta stick with this stuff. I just watched this movie, and this this line. Everybody's heard this one before, but why is when Yoda said it, it makes so much more sense when Yoda says it? But it applies to everything you do, and not just Drupal. It applies to everything you do. And when you try to do something like with Drupal, and it crashes and burns, you learn not to do that. And that, to itself, is a great lesson. So um, I want to thank uh, Jim Birch. I want to thank Ray. I uh, thank New Jersey uh, Drupal Camp, um, my boss Eric, Freddie, my team. Um, I used to work for WebNY, which is where everything is consolidated. I want to thank all those guys because I've done a lot of Drupal work with them and they're tremendous. Um, my mentors, Greg Marshall, Doug Van, Chris, um, and uh, I will see you all hopefully at DrupalCon Nashville. 
So, if you guys sent any questions, I will go ahead. Did you guys send any, anybody send any questions on Twitter? Oh, you did? Okay. Well, now I gotta get Twitter on. Uh, thank you. Uh, what was your question? Why, why, why I pull up my Twitter? No, you like, oh, okay, that's all right. I, you know, I, I, I was, I wasn't sure. I never know the acoustics of the room, like whether I, I'd be able to hear you. That was half of paranoia. The once, once we were going back and forth, I can hear him fine. So I'm sure if you have a question, I can, I, I can give you, I give you the shot to answer. Three, okay. Why is the AG's office so interested in Ray Salkini? <laughs> <laughs> We are? I'm under investigation. It's true. <laughs> um, how do you modify the bootstrap settings that get used in the bootstrap paragraph module? Um, okay, that's a really good question. Basically, how do you modify the bootstrap settings that get used in the bootstrap paragraph module? You don't actually modify the bootstrap settings. You modify your sub-theme that then is reflected in bootstrap paragraph. So if you change something in the sub-theme, it will then it will then cascade back into your other one. Did I answer your question? Good. Um, won't Drush DL bootstrap paragraphs automatically download all the other required modules? Um, probably, I could do that right now. Um, I, wouldn't, I don't usually do that. I like to have that little extra control of knowing what I'm downloading when I'm gonna use Drush. That's why I put the dash F select. Um, that way I'm selecting that one thing, it will give me all those related modules, but I want to make sure I'm getting the right version of Drupal Bootstrap. Like I said, Drupal Bootstrap 1 was totally different than Bootstrap 2, and uh, I have to tease Jim about that, and he still feels bad about it, which is really funny, because I think, it, I didn't feel bad about it, it broke, I got a new one. Um, okay, I think that was it, that's three questions. Thank you all very much. And Jim has given me some Twitter Bootstrap stickers to give to Tom, to give ah. to you. There you go. Any way you want to use them, I throw them out like picks at one of my show. I don't know if we'll reach that far. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'll leave them right up here and you guys can grab whatever you guys want. Um, thank you all very much. I really enjoyed presenting here and thank you guys so much for being a great audience. Yeah, I'm going to put this slide right up there. Once I fix that little all the whatever. Is the um, carousel dependent on the media module? No, it's not. Okay. As part of, it's because part of the previous. Uh, yeah, it's not part. It's, okay. it's part of the trap. It's actually part of the component part of, uh, of that. So, I think we're good. Red button.